Today, let's prepare for the holidays with one of the most popular appetizers I make. You can make it ahead of time, you can freeze it, it's awesome and everybody loves it. Perfect for game day, perfect for Thanksgiving appetizers, perfect for the holidays, perfect for New Year's even though we don't want to think about that yet. You're going to love it. Let's take a look. It may seem like the holidays are a long way away, but I counted it on the calendar this morning and Thanksgiving is just a little over six weeks away. Now, sausage balls are very popular around Thanksgiving, at least in the South, and they are absolutely delicious. The thing about it is, is they freeze really well. They're super easy. They are great for um, game day, tailgating, any kind of snacks. So I think the trick is, is to make a bunch of them now, serve them for, um, you know, your football parties and your get-togethers, and make extra and toss them in the freezer for the holidays. They're so easy, quick to put together, and um, you can actually cook them at least two different ways. Now, some people do them in the microwave. I've never tried, but you can do them in the oven and you can do them in the air fryer and I'm going to show you how to do both. So what we have here is a pound of bulk pork sausage. You can use regular sausage or hot. You have eight ounces of full fat cream cheese and a cup and a third of baking mix. Um, we have what will be two and a half cups of extra ch extra sharp cheddar cheese. And I always put about four ounces of chopped chilies in mine. That is completely up to you if you want to do it. Um, you don't need to. If you hear jingling in the background, it's not Santa Claus, it is the dog and her collar. So the first thing to do, always use block cheese. And here's why, yeah, it is so much easier to buy cheese that's already grated. But that cheese has a coating on it that is called cellulose. If you look on the bag, you'll see it. Cellulose is basically the same kind of stuff that <clears throat> wood is made out of. Basically, sawdust. Yep. And what cellulose does is it keeps the um, grated cheese from sticking together, which is great when you want to put it on tacos. But when you want it to melt, it's awful because it keeps the shredded cheese from melting nicely. And we always want our cheese to melt really gooey and good, so take it from the block. So I'm going to go ahead and shred this, the whole thing. It'll be about two and a half cups, and um, then I'll be back. You don't need to sit here and watch me do this. Also, if you like it spicy, uh, I've used pepper jack on this, and it's really, really good too. Okay, I'll see y'all in a few minutes. The easiest way to do this is to use the paddle attachment on your mixer, which sounds kind of crazy, but it is. So I'm going to pull that over here. I've let the ingredients sit out at 30 min for 30 minutes. When um, they're at room temperature or close to room temperature, they're much easier to mix. So you're going to add the uh, sausage and the biscuit mix first. And you're going to mix those up until they're really well blended. That way the um, those are those two ingredients get mixed up good because those are the hardest to get mixed up. Just put that right in there. Put it started on low. stop once in a while and get your rubber spatula and pull from the bottom and make sure that it's all getting mixed in. Once the flour is all mixed in, you can add everything else by hand if you want to, but you don't have to. And honestly, I don't want to. So I'm going to add the cream cheese and get that mixed in. And 
again, you're going to want to take your rubber spatula and just clean that off because you don't want there to be big lumps of cream cheese in there anywhere. You want it to be all mixed in evenly or as evenly as possible. Scrape that off the sides. Give it one more quick mix. Add the chili and the cheese. And that is all you need to do. You now you want to get that all scraped up. Bring the bowl down. And get it off the beaters. Or the mixer paddle. Be sure to stir it up from the bottom and pull it off the sides to make sure that it's all mixed in there pretty evenly and pretty well. You don't want any um, lumps of cream cheese. You don't want any patches of dry biscuit mix or baking mix, whatever you want to call it. Now you can line this with part, you can line your baking sheets with parchment. Make sure that they're high sided uh, because there will be grease a little bit but you want to line the baking sheets with parchment or grease them because the baking mix will cause it to stick and burn if you don't. I like to use a melon baller or a small um, cookie scoop to help me get the right amount of, um, of our mixture so that these are basically the same size. And you want it to be about the size of a walnut. roll it together and it is pretty messy at this point. You're just going to roll it into balls and put it on this baking sheet. You can keep it pretty close because they're not going to expand like cookies do. They're just going to bake nice and tender. Now I like mine with a crispy outside and a tender inside so I bake them at 400 degrees. If you like them to be just tender, I'm going to move these back a little bit so I can get more on. If you like these to be just tender all the way, you can try them at 350. I'd suggest trying them at, uh, one batch at one and one at the other to see which you like best. And then marking that down on your recipe and going with your favorite temperature from then on. It's always good to experiment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these into balls and obviously y'all can figure out how to do that. <clears throat> you don't need to sit here and watch me do that. And then I am going to put them in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes just to chill. Uh, my recipe is probably a little stickier, a little wetter than some recipes because of the chilies in it, but I promise you these are absolutely delicious and so worth it. So y'all go fix a cup of coffee or whatever and I will see you back here in a few minutes. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. These have really firmed up as you can see in the refrigerator. They're not really that sticky at all. I'm going to bake them for 10 to 15 minutes at 425 or until the internal temperature reaches about 160 degrees and then I'll let them sit for a few minutes and the, while the temperature continues to rise to about 165. So 
let's see what happens. While those are cooking, we're going to talk about the air fryer. Now, for the air fryer, I have kind of a small one, and it allows you to do kind of a small batch at a time. You want to make sure that you put them um, on your air fryer platform thing so that they have a lot of space in between them. You're going to follow the mixing and shaping instructions. You're going to chill them just like you did with the other ones. And then you're going to put them on the rack. Don't crowd them. And then you're going to put them in your air fryer just like that. And you're going to air fry them for a, at 375 for about six minutes. Again, you're going to want to use an Insta Read thermometer to check the internal temperature. And I would start checking it at about three to four minutes just to make sure because different air fryers, different amounts on here can all change it a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and get this started and um, we'll come back to it. So I'm checking these early and I'm going to check them at four minutes and see what we've got. And it's looking like they are definitely done from the air fryer at four minutes. At least these are. Again, when you're making anything with an air fryer, you want to check it often because it can change depending on the size, how many, just a lot of different things. So these took four minutes, not the full six minutes. And um, they have, ooh, those are hot. They have a crispy outside. And believe me, I am not gonna try to bite into those because they are super hot. Whew. But I'll put these on a plate and then you'll be able to see the difference between these and the ones that are baked in the oven. So these are the ones that were done in the air fryer. See how gooey that cheese is, and crispy that outside is. Ooh, I think I can't resist taking just one. Mmm. And the sausage balls done in the oven are definitely done. So we're gonna let those cool off a bit. But as you can see, even at the 425, the, um, the ones done in the oven have a more tender outside where, where the ones done in the air fryer have a crisper outside. So that's the main difference. Try them both ways and see what you like better. And then if you do them at 375, they have even a less crisp outside and believe me that is hard to say. We're going to let these cool for a minute and then we'll take a look. Now if I was going to freeze these, if I was going to do this next batch to freeze, I would put them on the cookie sheet. I would form them into balls and put them on the cookie sheet. And listen, one of the ways to keep them from sticking to your hands, grab your no cook sticking, your no stick cooking spray, and it's like magic. You can also dip your hands in ice water, but I prefer not to do it that way. Look at that. Okay. You can, uh, if you're going to freeze these, make them into balls the same size. You know, it's important to make these into the same size balls because they cook, you want them to cook evenly, right? And it's meat, and so you want it, them all to be done all the way through when you serve them. And um, that's, so that just makes it important. Now, notice if they vary a little bit, it's not going to be that great big of a deal, but, you know, close to the same size. You don't have to worry about having them spread apart at all because what we're going to do is we are just going to form them all on the cookie sheet and then I'm going to slide that cookie sheet right into the freezer and flash freeze these for about an hour and a half until I'm sure that they are frozen solid. Once they're frozen solid, 
I can take them off the cookie sheet and dump them right into a, um, a Ziploc bag, freezer bag, or I can put them in an airtight freezer container with like parchment between the layers and then freeze them for up to three months. You know what? I told you that right now we are roughly six weeks away from Thanksgiving. So if I have a freezer container full of these things, unfrozen, uh, frozen, unbaked, with parchment between the layers, that means that I can, at any point in time, go into my freezer, grab as many as I need for my party or whatever, throw them in the oven for, you're gonna wanna add a few minutes to the cook time or the bake time because you know you're baking them from frozen so let's say you're going to want to put them in there for 11 or 12 minutes instead of 10 but again be sure to check with your uh, instarid thermometer and i'm going to have fresh sausage balls without any mess or without any problem and i'm going to have them right then it's such a good way to always have you know what you need on hand for the holidays hang on let me wash my hands and start over I don't know about you but I can't stand when my hands start getting all that goo on them all right so what was I saying so when you have stuff like that in the freezer ready to go you are so organized you're so ready for anything um, I like to keep appetizers like this in there unbaked um, I like to keep uh, pie like that, my um, lemon icebox pie in the freezer. I think, no, I don't think, I know that the, there's a video for that up here. Um, and I know that the recipe's on the blog. Uh, I like to keep that in there. I like to keep the cloverleaf rolls. Um, I do my own brown and serve rolls with those. When you have things like that in the freezer and some extra casseroles or whatever, you are always ready for whatever happens. And you can just pull it out at a moment's notice and have fresh appetizers, fresh rolls, fresh dinner, whatever you need without a big problem. People think you're amazing, which is always nice, even though, you know, you might not think you are because you'll know the truth, like I know the truth of me. And um, it's just fun, it's just nice to have those things ready to go. So just make these, I've been talking and these have gotten consistently smaller as I've gone along, I haven't been paying attention. Make these just like you would, uh, but instead of put them, putting them in the fridge to um, chill, you're just gonna put them right in the freezer for about an hour and a half to two hours. Or if it's late at night and you're making them, just let them go overnight, that's not gonna hurt them. And then the next morning, or you know, when they're frozen solid, just take them and put them, I like to put them in, honestly, um, a freezer container. And then I'll put a row on the bottom, parchment paper, another row parchment paper, up as much as I can. And that way I can just take them out as I need them and have as many as I need. It's a great idea. It's a great way to prepare for the holidays. And I hope it helps you. So these are the ones that we did in the air fryer. A little crispier on the outside. And these are the ones we did in the oven. A little gooier on the outside. They are both really, really delicious. They are both really, really yummy. And I hope you're going to try these because they are so good. They're so fun to have on hand. It's so fun just to say, oh, I just made some appetizers this afternoon. Would you like some? To unexpected company and have them freak out because you are so ready and prepared and just an amazing hostess or host. So try these. I know you're going to love them. And don't forget to come back next week. Don't forget to subscribe. I love y'all and I'll talk to you later, okay? Bye.